Today I want to show you how you can create some really cool stylized mountain illustrations in Procreate and for that I'm actually providing you the file with the colors that I've used in this video and also the sketch for this illustration as well. So you may decide to just recreate this illustration on your side or you may also come up with your own colors in your own illustration still following this style and the steps used in this video to create your own illustrations. And with that, you can print them as posters, you can make uh, really cool postcards, and there are so many possibilities that you can do with stylized illustrations that you can create rather quickly, and they're still quite eye-catching. So make sure to stick around until the end of this video so you don't miss anything. My name is Leo, and you're watching Ghost Papers, so now let's get to it. All right, so let's start this lesson. So. Um, the first thing is that, of course, this file will be in the description box of this video, but there are two ways to actually go about uh, making this illustration. One is that you can totally follow the uh, sketch layer that I've left in this file as well. I'm just going to bring the opacity so that you can see a little bit better how the sketch layer is here in this file. And the other thing is that you can also follow the color palette that, that I'm also leaving in this file. However, I actually encourage you to actually try to do this on yourself. You can choose another palette, which you can just, you know, research on your own. There are some great websites such as Adobe Cooler. There is Color Hunt by Galshir, and you can try to find a different color choice for, uh, for your own to create this illustration. And the second thing is that you may actually also want to not follow the sketch layer. So if I was not to follow the only, um, advice I would give you, let me just make this brush a little bit bigger, is that try to make a composition that is similar to, that has a little, that has balance. So as you can see here, one mountain is a little higher than the second one. You may also decide to go with something like this. So the sun's over here, but try to not make something like this. Like the two mountains have about, you know, pretty much the same height. You may actually want to do this, but just kind of think that this, you know, what we're creating is like almost like a bit of an icon or uh, like a symbol or a logo. So it's always important to think about negative space. And in this case here, there, there's not a lot, not a lot of negative space if your mountains and sun layer and everything will be very much at the top of the composition. So that's really uh, all that I wanted to let you know just before we start, just a little bit of a disclaimer. So now let's go back into our sketch layer, make this a little bit less intense because I always like to keep my sketch layer a little bit less opaque. Also, in the case that I'm drawing on the sketch layer, I'm just going to lock it. But in the case that I'm drawing by mistake, I can see that my colors aren't going to be so strong. So that's one of the indicators that I'm actually drawing in the wrong layer. So let's just start. I'm going to use my mono line here, my studio pen. I'm going to keep it at a lower kind of size. And now we're just gonna start by choosing the mountain color, which would be this kind of a rich blue here. That's what we're going to start as for our mountains. So at this point, we don't really have to be too careful with the boundaries of the circle. I'll show you in a little bit how we can solve this problem. And I also just want to mention, in case you haven't noticed, of course, that this is a very stylized illustration. So this doesn't really go into the boundaries of the realistic kind of mountain design. This really is uh, more in the sense of like a stylized, very kind of low poly design. So I hope that this is something that you uh, actually also enjoy, that you like to, because that's more or less what, the, what this illustration is about. As you can see, we're also going to be doing a lot of color dragging. This is to just save time while painting these surfaces. So right here, we finished the first mountain. Let's jump onto the next one. And I'm just gonna keep them in the same layer. Or let me think for a second, maybe I will separate them into different layers just in case. I'm not really thinking about creating an in-between kind of shadow between the mountains, but just in case anyways, uh, in case that kind of happens down the road, or like there's a necessity for that, I'm just gonna keep them as separate layers. It's better to have the option than to not have, right? So 
Let's just keep drawing the second mountain over here. Now that we have our mountain base, we're actually going to just paint the sky just very quickly. So I'm just gonna set this as our bottom layer. And for the sky, we're just going to be using uh, this baby blue color right here. Now make sure that we're still in Studio Pan and a different layer. And let's just get this round shape. Hold one finger onto the canvas to make sure that we're drawing a perfect circle. And now I'm just going to position this a little bit better. So now that we have our circle, I'm gonna drop a color and this will be our circle. So now I'm going to tap on the circle itself, hit select and I'm going to get our two mountains. I will actually merge the mountains because I think I'm not gonna create any separation between them. I'm gonna tap on our mountains layer and select mask. Oops, I just lost the selection. So once again, click on the sky layer, which is a circle. I'm gonna delete this mask, click on our mountain layer and select mask. So now, as you can see, we've deleted the bottom of the base color of the mountain. So now, we're going to tap on our mountain layer, create a new layer and set it to clipping mask because now we're going to continue adding layers to our mountain, which is to give volume to our mountain. So now we're going to select this darker shade of blue here. And because we are using a clipping mask, I just want to show you something. I can paint here on the outside of the mountains and I don't really have to worry about painting outside the bleeding area of the mountains. However, because this is respecting the mountain, um, this will paint anywhere inside it. And we do have a very specific path here that we're going to be following for this mountain shadow, which is this line that you see here running through the left side of the mountain. So we got our mountain and we got, we have also the shadows of our mountain. So now let's paint the sun layer, sky, paint some of the trees that we see at the bottom of this illustration as well. So we're going to start with the sun here, make a new layer just behind the mountains and get our eyedropper, get the sun going here. Mask. And now for painting these shadows, uh, there's actually two ways. One is that you may actually want to stick with the mono line and you want to paint these very strong sections or like strong kind of chunks of color. And then you just go into the adjustments and use the Gaussian blur to soften, uh, soften them. And then you can also use the move tool to bring them down to the desired position. Or if you want, you can also just use a soft brush, which Procreate comes with some really great soft brushes and they're all located in the airbrushing section in the brush library. So there's the soft airbrush, there's the soft brush, which is the really big one. And that's exactly the one that I'm using. I just keep it in my favorites so I can access uh, it a little bit quicker. 
So I'm just going to increase this a little bit and paint more or less so. And now um, I may just want to test one thing out with overlay and bring this down a bit. So almost making like two copies. One is at like normal with 65%. The other one is overlay at 100%, just to give a little bit more of a pop of color on our sun layer. All right, so now let's move on to the, uh, maybe the sky, because since we're just doing the top part of the image, let's go make these clouds as well. So I'm just gonna create a new layer and use our eyedropper, select the um, kind of yellowish, pale yellow color, make sure we're on the studio pan once again, and let's make these clouds here very quickly. So now that we have our four clouds, I'm going to once again make a new layer, set it to clipping mask, because now we're going to give some shading to these clouds. For that, I'm just gonna tap and hold onto my color swatch here so it reverts back to my last used color, which is a color that I'll probably leave here in the color swatches, I don't really see it much here, but this is almost like a stronger pink color. So now let's go back into the clouds, make this a little bit smaller, and we're just kind of tinting them, I like the base of the, the clouds. Something like this, then here, I just need to make it a little bit more special. This guy, like this, and this guy. So now I'm just going to turn off my sketch layer just for a little bit, because I wanna take a look at the opacity of these clouds, of the shading of these clouds. And I think I'm gonna take it down to about 55% or so, because I wanna give a little bit of that sense of the rich kind of uh, sunset colors, but I don't wanna overload them into the clouds layer. So now let's turn back our sketch layer, because we still got some work to do. And let's go back to the mountains and make another layer here and also call it a clipping mask. And now I'm going to tap and hold to go back to our very bright or pale yellow. And what we're going to do now is give this give these mountains a little bit more volume. And how we're going to do that, we're going to go back into our mono line and we're going to set it to about 25% or so, something that has like a little bit of a size. And we're going to paint a section and a section more or less about this size. And we're also going to move this layer just underneath the shadow layers because we were actually now going to paint some highlights onto these mountains. So we've, we've done our first kind of chunk here. And now what we want is go back into the soft brush. And now we're going to erase these areas. I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. We just wanna add a little bit here of an effect, just like so. Something like this. I'm actually gonna try Gaussian blurring it. Now I think it's better the way it is. I'm gonna actually use the soft brush as well. See what happens. Again, use the razor. Here we go. Something like something like this. Something like this is fine. And now we're going to make a second one. So make sure that we're on our studio pan. And now we're going to draw like a very hard edge line here and paint another section. And now using the soft brush to raise it, we're going to make this really nice kind of a, like a line, like a line highlight, such as this one, okay? So now I think for these layers, I'm going to actually set them as screen mode because they're really like the highlights 
for, for the mountains. And now on the let's do the next uh, next mountain here, which is the one on the right. Make sure we're using the mono line. We're getting just a little section, something like this. Use our eraser, uh, which is the soft brush once again. And I'm just gonna bring this down a bit. I think I took it too much from the very first couple strokes here, from the top. This is a bit better. And something like this. Okay. I'm just gonna experiment, adding a little bit more and erasing a little bit more as well. So now let's continue and now we're going to paint some of the uh, the pine trees that we see here at the bottom of our illustration. So we're going to go all the way to the top of the chain here in the layers panel. We're going to create a new layer and now we're going to select a the darker blue that we use to paint the shadows here. And let's start. So now I'm gonna make sure that we're back into the studio pan or monoline, make it really small so that we can get all of these details right here. And now onto this highlight layer, make a new layer, set it to clipping mask, and we're going to go find this color right here, and we're going to use our soft brush just to give some volume. And remember, it's just on the highlights, something like this. I'm gonna use my erase brush as well. Let's make sure that we still see a little bit of that yellow that we were just painting, something like this. That looks super cool and it looks illuminated by the sun as well. So let's make the next one. going to paint the vegetation that is behind the trees so now we're just going to use a darker even darker color that I believe is right here in the palette and we're going to create a new layer make sure that we drop it all the way behind the trees and it should be something like this and let's get started back into the studio pan and let's get started also just a quick thing here guys is that will probably merge all of the trees, the foreground trees, just so it gets uh, a little bit easier for layer management and stuff like that. And also because we can get our layer mask as well, selecting the main sphere, and which I believe, sorry, actually is the blue, the blue sky one. So select this one, and now going to the tree layer and uh, selecting mask. So now we have masked off the bottom that was out, uh, going outside here for the main tree. So now let's go back into the background uh, vegetation. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so same thing as well. We're going to select the blue sky layer, select, go into our vegetation, hit mask, and turn back on our trees. So now we have a bit of a base here in terms of the elements. Now let's add a few more uh, environmental effects here in order to make, in order to add a little bit more depth into this illustration. So I'm actually going to turn off the sketch layer because we won't really need more uh, needed at this point. Uh, and uh, let's just get into these environmental effects. So what are those things and how can we enhance the depth in this illustration? So the very first thing that we're going to do here is to tap on our base mountain layer, select a new layer, and we're not, uh, we're actually uh, going to delete this tab and just above like the mountain and all of its layers, we're going to select this layer. We will also, once again, tap on our uh, mask for the sky here. And uh, with this new layer, I'm just gonna select mask. So that is going to paint with the boundaries respecting everything in, in terms of the boundaries of this layer. And now we're going to use the soft brush and the same color that we use for the base of the mountains. And now I'm just going to turn this way so it's a little easier for me to paint. And what we're going to do here is create an effect such as called the haze, the haziness of like seeing this from the distance. Uh, I actually painted in the wrong layer, so sorry for that. I'm just making sure that, yes, so this is right. Let's get the right color, which is the base of mountains. And now that we're here in this layer, I just want to make sure that I got it selected right. Yes, I lost my mask, guys, so bear with me. Let's go back into the sky, select, and mask. So now, when we paint, you see this kind of a hazy, uh, haziness effect uh, to it. But this is something that needs to be done in, in like in a very delicate way because we don't want it to go too high up in the frame. So now let's do the same with the foreground layers as well, creating this haziness effect. So we, we're going to start with the more of a darker vegetation here. So adding those nice gradients to it. And I believe that this looks pretty good. Now we're going to do the same with the sky, but with a different color. We're going to do a little bit of a gradient in the sky. We're going to go down all the way to this blue disc, make a new layer. And this one can be just a straight up clipping mask. And we're just going to get a, our pale yellow Oops. right here. Make sure that we're using the soft brush again, that we have this layer selected and clear with no mistakes. And now let's just get this section painted like so. So this is pretty much the base for this illustration. I think that from here, we can now add some really nice texturing effects, uh, such as grain, such as texturing on the mountains. And I have a complete brush pack for that, which I also leave in the description box of this video, which can really add and bring this illustration to the next level by adding textures to the mountain, to the mountains, to the backgrounds, and to the vegetation as well. So that's it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like it would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything also on the right side of the screen there's more content for you to watch on procreate and kind of sharpen your skills on this amazing application for this mobile media such as the ipad thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one ciao